The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. It's uh, Thursday. It's terrific Thursday. It's December the 5th. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Think about that one, folks. How many people do you know that are tied up in the last moment or the moment from yesterday or the one from a week ago? You got to be a pioneer of your future, not a prisoner of your past. But thanks so much for joining me. Hey, this show is really, it's all about you. During this next 60 minutes, I'd love to be able to field your questions about any instruments that you've got an interest in, whether you own it, whether you're long, whether you're short, whether you just have a, an interest in it, we can take a look at it for multiple time frames like we will for Justin and uh, Jim in just a moment. Of course, they want to take a look at the same thing out there, but uh, we've got an hour to uh, work at. Right now, we've got uh, markets trading. They're mixed. We've got the uh, Dow off a little over one-tenth of a percent. So not a big deal. That's really flat. It's down 39 points. S&P's off three. NASDAQ 100 down seven. The Russell is totally flat. The semis are up two points. That's flat out there. The New York Stock Exchange is flat. Wilshire's off 36 points. It's only one-tenth of a percent out there. But we're going to we're gonna take a look at the markets. Gold, we're going to spend time looking at gold out here. That's what Jim and Justin want to take a look at. Slightly different uh, approach uh, that, they, that they've got. Well, one is looking to uh, enter into Barrick Gold. So we'll take a look at the individual stocks as well. It's trading out at 1484. It's below the top of its profile. I believe we'll take a look at that. Silver is up 12 cents. Natural gas up four pennies. Light sweet crude is uh, uh, flat out there. Lead the charge, by the way, to the upside. And I do mean charge. It is restoration hardware. Uh, well, here, let me uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. That way, you, you know, you can see where I'm pulling the uh, data from out here. So lead the charge dollar wise. The upside It's restoration hardware, hardware led by Mettler Toledo up 11 bucks. Chipotle up eight. Um, Orena Pharmaceuticals up eight. That's 91 cents, 91 percent. They must have solved something out there. Sage Therapeutics down 87 bucks, 58 percent. Sounds like they didn't solve anything. Amazon off 16. Alico Sync down 15 bucks or 11 percent. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So let's go right to it. Jim P. And uh, so Jim is asking the question. We'll try to kind of do them tag team here. He says, I'm looking to buy, looking for a buy area for the stock gold. That is Barrick Gold out there. I know that you've been thinking that gold is not bottom, but thought it might be in December or January. What price level do you think would be a good buy for the stock when gold does bottom? And then we've got Justin's question says, hey, Steve, well, can you talk about uh, gold today? Looks like it's breaking out and up. Thanks in advance. Okay, so so there's our different perspectives on gold. I'm going to give you the charts perspective on gold and what it uh, maybe is or isn't doing. And we're going to we're going to go in reverse order. I think uh, that way we've got the bigger picture. We can see what's going on, and so therefore this will really apply to Justin's question with regard to breaking out and up. So let's take a look at gold, looking at the monthly time frame chart. And what we're going to see out here, as soon as we expand this chart, we're going to see a beautiful, confirmed Gartley cell pattern. Now, a Gartley cell pattern has got an A to B equals CD. That's what we see from gold coming off of the bottom. That A to B, the A point on that, by the way, began from a monthly TD setup nine count. That was back in December of 2015 out there. Uh, so there's our A to B equals CD. Uh, it completes out here in August of this year. And then in September was the kibosh, the confirmation of that pattern. A nice big old bearish engulfing. Well, that was a dark cloud cover candle, actually. Two months later, yes, last month, we got the uh, bearish engulfing. So what do you know out here, Justin, is yeah, maybe maybe from a short-term time frame that, you, that you're looking at, maybe things are breaking away, up and away. I would say if you're a fan of Gartley, and you may not be a fan of Gartley, but if you are, what gold has done is formed a fairly significant top. And yeah, maybe I was looking for a bottom in January. Uh, not so fast. Now, look, 
the first role and responsibility on a longer term basis, monthly time frame out here, uh, because we have both Stevie's red line turning green and a confirmed Gartley sell pattern is for price to push its way down to Stevie's green line. Currently, that's printing at 1427.80. Uh, so uh, both Jim and uh, Justin out here. I'd really wait for that test to unfold. Maybe Stevie's Green Line's going to rise up to the occasion, meaning price, or maybe it's price pulling back. I don't know what that is. And if price closes below on a monthly basis, Stevie's Green Line, that tells you to be prepared for even a further retracement. But on the long-term basis, you've got an absolute, if, 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 if you're a person, and I know most of you listen to, to Larry, I listen to, well, when I can, I listen to Larry, but certainly I did and, and hired him um, uh, many years ago to, to be able to learn his patterns. Yeah, hired him, paid the big bucks out there uh, for that. And so uh, I love that pattern. It's a great pattern. And so it is identified at top. Now, we don't have to stop there. We won't stop there because I want you to have the bigger perspective and the bigger picture out here. So here's the weekly time frame chart because this has got kind of both a top and a bottom. And so here is the tug of war. The top was the Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal. Now, that confirmed out here. Let me get my cursor. You can see price was moving higher. Maybe you can't see it, but price was moving higher, doing less relative energy into September 27th. Uh, and on September 27th, that happened to be a body of a candle that engulfed the prior body. Price was in an uptrend. That was your bearish engulfing and confirmation of a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Now, what price did do was price did bottom with a TD9 bottom pattern and it did this here on November 15th and so certainly we've got the sign of a bottom on a weekly basis and the sign of a top on a monthly basis and a sign of a top on the weekly basis so which one is right I don't know which one is right I know that price below Stevie's green line out here which is 15 1150 uh, this tells me topping pattern on the weekly topping pattern on the monthly all suggesting lower price that is the bigger picture now Let's go to a smaller picture, the daily time frame. What does a daily time frame tell us? Really, for the daily time frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just switch over here right now and take a look at what's going on around the world because this is so important, Jim. This is so important, Justin. When we take a look at this gold chart here, for gold priced in U.S. dollars, in euros, in yen, and in pounds, what is it that we see that is common amongst all of these currencies? What is common is what we have here is a series of lower highs and lower lows. I do not think now. The, the, look, it's, uh, I, I should let me restate that. It doesn't matter what I think. We just want to go take a look at the charts. And so what we know is you've got a topping pattern on the weekly, a topping pattern on the monthly, a series of lower highs and lower lows on the um, daily time frame. Well, obviously, it would have been on the other charts. And it's in all major currencies out here. Now, what gold actually did here, we take a look from a daily perspective, the left-hand panel, you're going to see the price ran into resistance at 1490.40. 1490.40 was the center of its weekly profile. And, Justin, you're right. Gold may bounce even further. It may bounce up to 1512.90, but it doesn't take away from a series of lower highs and lower lows. And I think you've got to be patient. Now, we'll take a look at Barrett Gold because that's what Jim had written in about uh, at first. So we'll take a look at that. Of course, I want to hear from you, too. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's off 34, S&P down uh, two points. Let's go take a look at Barrett Gold out here, get a feel for what it's doing, and we're going to do the same thing. Um, let's start with uh, taking a look at the uh, monthly time frame chart out here. And so here's what we know uh, from a monthly uh, time frame. We know that uh, price is uh, trading below its breakout area, which is 1835 on a monthly uh, base breakdown area, 1835. So that's proven to be resistance out here. We can see that Stevie's oscillator and change line turned green. It uh, looks like this month out here. And that says that price in that line should catch up to each other. That's around the 1533 level. Let's not use 15. 33 is the exact price, but I know you're looking for an entry uh, area out here, Jim. And so 1533 would be run area. I'd put it's really Steve, whatever the value of Stevie's green line is on a monthly time frame when that test unfolds. But you can write that down on a pad of paper. If we look at the weekly time frame chart out here, what do we know? We know that what Barrett Gold did was it confirmed a nice one to 1.618. A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, it confirmed that pattern with the uh, big old bearish engulfing candle. That was the week of September 6th out there. Prices move lower. There's no TD setup nine count pattern because um, the low was not formed on bar eight, nine, or the bar following nine, which on my screen would be number one out here. What price has done this week, and by the way, the pricing isn't being updated for some reason right now on my weekly chart, so it doesn't have today's data in there. doesn't matter. We can take a look at what it's done here for the week, and what it's done here for the week, it's it, it, it punched its way up and tested and has rejected Stevie's green line right around the 1766 level. So this suggests further price pullback. Now, its price pullback would be to the breakout level of 1257. So you got a $3 difference, obviously, between that and what we're taking a look at on the monthly time frame. But you've got the weekly and you have the monthly that are pointing to a uh, to to a move lower. Now, if we take a look at the three multiple time frames out here for Barrick Gold, get a feel for what's going on right now, it is trading above the top of its daily profile and that's 1703 and if it uh, continues to trade above 1703 bear gold well it needs to close above 1753 that's the weekly center of its box it's a bullish structured profile i mean the center at 1753 is much closer to the bottom 
which is 1668 versus the top at 1922. And so what that tells us, if on a weekly basis you see a close above the center of the box, because at the center, think of it like this, the center of the box is where the party is at. That is where everybody RSVP to. You have both buyers and sellers that believe that bare gold is fairly valued at 1753. The buyers are lined up at 1668, and the sellers are lined up at 1922. Currently, they're sleeping. I'm just kidding. That's just a metaphor. Who knows what it was? But it, though, these are what the lines represent out here. My experience is that when you see a close on a bullish structured box above the center, usually then buyers have gotten together and they've overrun those sellers because there's only sellers sitting, right, sellers and buyers, a small group of sellers, let's say, or a group of sellers at the center, and the larger group of sellers is at the top of that profile. Kind of makes sense? So right now on the weekly basis, saying, eh, no, no, not so fast. You've got the weekly test and rejection of Stevie's green line, and price has not been able to close above the center of that weekly profile out there. So, um, Jim, uh, you know, I, I just think you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. Um, I haven't gone through and, you know, done the test to see what the correlation, directional correlation is between Barrick Gold specifically and the gold contract, but I'll assume it's similar. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give the, the weighting to the gold contract, but we just took a look at what uh, Bear Gold is doing, and it's it's not like it's saying, hey, this is a breakout, and one should jump on board. So for both of you, I hope that that really helps you out with regard to what uh, gold, what Bear Gold is doing, what the charts at least are communicating to you and I. Now let's go take a look at the no other questions that are on deck, so we'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. But let's go take a look at the general markets. Let's try to figure out what's going on out here, as Marvin Gay might say. Or Stevie Gay. You never know. Well, let's take a look at Marvin Gay. And Marvin would say, hey, uh, speaking of the NQ, were we speaking of the NQ? Um, probably not. But speaking of the NQ, what it was doing today, well, here's what we were speaking of. We were speaking of the top of those profiles and how they act as buyers at the bottom, Buyers and sellers in the center and sellers at the top. So we saw a counter trend rally so far, counter trend rally. It must be termed a counter trend rally. Of course, you can term it anything you want. But where did price stop this morning? It stopped basically right at the top of that profile. How does that work? Well, 83.44, we know how it works. That is where sellers are. If this is more than a counter trend rally, if this is more than a counter trend rally, you need to see the NQ close above those sellers at 83.44. Now, it's not as if it is totally bearish out here either because price is trading with inside the box. A close below 82.53 would then say, okay, sellers are the ones with the upper hand out here. So right now what we see profile-wise inside the NQ, you know that sellers are up there. That's already been proven to you. If you were asking yourself, why did the market begin selling off when it did at 7 o'clock this morning, 6 or 7 o'clock this morning, it's because the NQ had gotten up to where the sellers were at. And the NQ in a bullish market or a bearish market is typically going to be the leader to the either the upside or to the downside. And so I believe that the NQ is the one that is most um, worthwhile to be focused on and watching uh, as to what it might do out there. So yeah, this is what's going on inside. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, it's trading below the bottom of its box. This would say the Dow is targeting the 26.748, 26.909. If we were only using market profiles, that's what we would say. That's what the charts would say because price is below support of the daily. So where the weekly profiles, voila, we've got them, we see them, and price will go down there. Now, the Russell 2000 area right-hand panel out here, price is trading right now at the bottom of its profile level. That is 16.13. And uh, the ES Mini, it's trading in, it's trading uh, just slightly above the bottom of its profile at 30.97 out there. So is the, are the markets bullish? Are they bearish out here? What what are they? Of course, it's always going to be dependent upon what time frame we look at. But let's take a look at a few other things out there. And a few other things, you know, you and I, you and I, that's right, you and I, we love that advanced decline oscillator reading inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, the general meaning of it, let's just take a look at the general out here, the four-star general, says that when the advanced decline oscillator is below zero, which it has been below zero for a while out here, right now it's trading at minus 56.62, tells you sellers are in control. 
Now, couple that with the bottom panel. The bottom panel is the spot volatility index. And let me switch over. It might be easier for you to see if I switch to this chart. No, that's not the chart I wanted. To, well, let's come back here. Let's just come back here. Let's just leave. It's the bottom. You can take a look at my data box. You'll see the 50-day exponential moving average is 1399. That's referring to the spot volatility index. Right now, it's trading at 1470. So as long as price is above that, it says a lack of liquidity in the market, and this is when markets can move to the downside. So at this stage here, um, the New York Stock Exchange and the advanced decline oscillator reading for it are suggesting that bears are in control or sellers. The spot volatility is suggesting that sellers are in control. That would change if price closed over 1399. Let's continue looking at a couple of other tools to help us understand are the markets bullish or bearish? Or are they neutral? She broke with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 22. S&P is off uh, about uh, two points, point and a half right now. So let's continue looking at the market. So here's what we've, we've taken a look at. The We understand why. Uh, or at least why we believe it lines up with the uh, selling that took place uh, earlier this morning inside the uh, markets. And it was the NQ bumping into resistance, top of that weekly or daily profile in the 8344 level. 
Um, so it's neutral because price is trading in between its profiles right now out here. We know that uh, in the New York Stock Exchange that it has got a bearish or sellers in control signal as well as a spot volatility index. So you know what those levels to look at. Uh, but what's interesting here, let's pull over. Um, because we can take a look at the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look and understand uh, what's going on there. And so if we look under the covers of the NASDAQ 100, what we'll see, and if you just look at the upper right-hand panel where you see the speed dials out here, you'll see the weekly is still bullish. Now, bullish, if you look at the speed dials, you're going to see red, blue, and green. Probably we should have done red, white, and blue, right? But uh, it, it, red, blue, and green is what uh, uh, John uh, decided on going with out here. It doesn't matter. Look, here's the reality. If it's in red, then it tells us that we've got a bearish crossover, which you do have on the 60-minute time frame. You don't on the 240. You do on the daily. You don't on the weekly. Hey, even the NASDAQ doesn't really know what in the heck it's doing right now. It's not consistent. It's not consistently bullish. It's not consistently bearish. Hey, kind of like where price is trading in the middle of its profile out there. Well, how about the S&P 500? What is it doing out here? If we take a look at the S&P 500, well, what we're going to see is this is even more confusing. The daily is the one that is bearish, but the 60-minute, the 240, the weekly, they're still in bullish configurations out there. So this is a market. This is a sign. This is signals here of a choppy marketplace which in essence is really what we've got going on right now. And that was uh, the profile, I think, uh, uh, showed that to us when we took a look at the NQ out there. But here, there's no consistency of a message we take a look at because if the market was really bearish out here, I understand the 60 minute. We take a look at the S&P 500 being green, a little counter trend rally trying to unfold and so forth. The daily being bearish, the 240 should still be bearish and it's not out there. And so, hmm, something to think about. Well, what do you think about? You think about where's the spot volatility index trading when it comes to the day's end and where's the NQ trading when it comes to uh, the, uh, the the TAS profile out there. What else? Well, so it was the 60 minute. Let's go take a look at the 60 minute NQ out here that was still bearish. Let's take a look at it. So, if you want a second reason why price did what it did this morning, again, we're looking at the NQ. Forms a nice TD setup, roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. Does this on uh, Tuesday, right, to Wednesday. Does it uh, at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, December the 3rd out there. Then what unfolds? Well, price makes its way all the way up to singing in the key of G. And where does it pause when it gets up to wave number seven? where price had broken down. Where did it break down? Well, that was brought to us by that TD9 count, 83.36.50. Are you kidding me? You get to wave number seven, you get right up to resistance on a 60-minute time frame, just as the NQ on a daily basis is running into resistance where their sellers are. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I'm just reporting to you what the charts are communicating to us out here. And price right now is below the bottom of its box on a 60-minute time frame. That is the NQ, which is 8,300. No other bottoming signal. This is suggesting some lower price. That's with the 30-minute time frame. Now, if price decides to do something different, because it can do whatever it's going to do, I can't control it, you can't control it. Well, you can control it because you can just keep buying and you can push it up that way. But other than that, right, we really can't control it. But if price were to close above 83.36.50, that would be, at least on the short-term basis, saying price might want to run to 84.54. And if all that happens, well, price would be above the top of its daily profile, wouldn't it? And that would put it into bullish configuration. So there's the NQ. There's the markets. What else with regard to the markets can I share with you? And I don't know what else it would be. B. So let's just go to more questions. We've got a question inside the Tiger's Den from Satish that wants to take a look at SPGI. Let's go take a look at SPGI. SPGI is the S&P Global Inc. Now, Satish, today's kind of interesting for you, interesting for you with regard to this ticker symbol because price is right now trading at 271, and the top of the box, which is where the sellers are at, is at 270.83. So if this is just like a counter trend rally, hard to say it's a counter trend rally when this is, in essence, at all time highs out there. But you kind of know the you kind of get the scheme of what I'm communicating to you. If price is going to find resistance, it's right here right now.
That's what the daily time frame says. Now, the weekly time frame says, hey, not so fast. I'm above resistance. Of course, the week's not over. It's only Thursday. So we don't know where it's going to finish tomorrow. And that was a 266.50. And on the monthly time frame, it's above the top of its uh, monthly profile. So no resistance out there. So let's go take a look at the uh, other chart patterns. Let's pull over the monthly. What do we have on a monthly time frame? Oh, son of a goodness. You've got price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Hey, not a big deal. See here, it was doing that as it was forming that TD setup nine count. It was bar number eight that made the high. This is back in September. What did price actually do during the month of October as it was reaching bar number nine, making bar number nine? It was testing support, the first level of support. Stevie's green line out there. So that held. So this is still bullish, not bearish, even though it's got topping signals out here. In order to really get uber bullish, you're going to see you're going to need to see price take out the high from uh, November. And if it does that, then that gives you Satish the super uber bullish. But right now, it's even the monthly still has a topping pattern in place, uh, two topping patterns in place. But price has not been able to break through support on a monthly basis. That is Stevie's green line. If we go take a look at the uh, weekly time frame. The weekly time frame again, price trading above the top of its profile, but it's it, it's suggesting just caution. Price movement higher, doing less relative energy. If there were to be a bearish reversal candle that would form, that would be easy because last week's candle was a doji. Um, you'd have that. So just as careful, caution. Uh, still bullish message out here as we speak right now. On both the week, well, the, the, both of them say caution. That's it. Just caution. Not sell, not sell, not short, just caution. If we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, this thing tops with a TD setup nine count pattern. It's bar number eight out there. Price tries to push its way down to support, which would have been in the 256 area, at 256.24 or 252.37. Never made it down there. So, uh, Satish, are, are you asking me to draw a conclusion here? You got careful on the weekly, careful on the uh, monthly. The daily has a topping pattern, a confirmed topping pattern which says it stays in place unless the actual all-time high gets taken out. So I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol SPGI. That is the S&P Global Inc. out there. I believe there's another question that uh, came in. You're welcome. Uh, my pleasure. Happy to help out. Another question coming in from, um, sorry, I have to turn away from the mic out here, uh, to, to, to Roku. So this is coming in from, not sure what's coming in from. But the question is, can we take a look at Roku from an intraday perspective, expecting a 4 to $5 down move out there? So Roku, let me pull over Roku. Let me pull over my uh, my little tool here that I'm working on. It's still not complete out here. But uh, here, if we just in Roku, take a look at all the intraday time frames you might look at on something that trades for six and a half hours. Hmm, no top or bottom signal when it comes to the TD nine counts out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at the charts on ROKU. Of course, I want to hear from you, too. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. set she's louise if you're in the den can you give me the high sign that you can actually hear me that would be great uh otherwise i'll just keep going but we'll just repeat myself um hmm, i don't think they have i don't think inside the den uh in the control room maybe ping me via skype just so i know if i'm on the line, so to speak, or not out there. Uh, but what price is doing, I'll just continue on here, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, 151.78. So if price closes below that uh, today, stays below that, then which suggests that you could have a further down move out here. Uh, the uh, down move on a weekly basis says that price would run into support at about 120.17. So that's more than the four or five dollars that you are looking for out there. Uh, in the den, just confirm that you guys can hear me. I know there was a, uh, a slight system problem here, an interconnection problem. We hear you. That's great. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I've got these. Uh, so those of you that have listened to the show, you know, when someone calls in or, or writes in and wants me to take a look at intraday charts for the um, for ETFs, uh, for only things that are basically trading for six and a half hours, that um, I'm a real big proponent in looking at information um, equally, so to speak. Equally, that's not really what, uh, but from a time frame standpoint. So all you have to do is take 390 minutes and start dividing it to figure out which ones have equal time frames. Well, if you do that, you end up with a 15 minute time frame, a 65 minute time frame, a 30 minute time frame, and 130 minute. That would be three different bars that you would form out there, not 120. Why use 120? Why use 120 minute time frame? For an instrument that trades six and a half hours, 130 minutes will give you three equal bars out there. Well, look, I don't know the answer to that. If we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart out here, um, I've got a potential for wave number seven, letter G, out there. Uh, price is trading in between its profiles, 83.52, 84.34. Support here uh, on a 30-minute chart is at 82.47. That is its breakout level, TD9 breakout level. The 15-minute time frame chart shows the roads momentum indicator top. That was price movement higher doing less relative energy. In order for this to be able to signal to you on a 50-minute base that price wants to move lower, price must break through support. 
83.53, trading at 83.90. Before I'd put on that put trade, I'd sure like to see it break through a level of support that would then say that 83.53, that would then open up the door for 79.50 out there. Uh, the 65-minute to chart out here, I don't have a topping signal, but price is trading above the top of its profile. It's trading above Stevie's green line. That's bullish out there in the short term. And then, voila, our 30-minute time frame. If price found resistance, it was right at its breakdown level. The breakdown level was 84.50. No topping signal out there other than that was the breakdown area, and that's where it found resistance uh, during the last 130-minute bar out there. So... Even though it found resistance, it's still trading above Stevie's green line at 83.30. And uh, so on the intraday charts out here, um, even though we've seen a couple that have got some short-term topping signals, nothing has broken through support. And I think that's what you would like to see, especially if you're putting, uh, you're doing this uh, using puts. I, you'd want to do it anyways. It doesn't really matter out there. Um, but I've given you what the charts uh, tell you so or are saying. So best of luck on that trade. Um, give me a moment here, folks, to see if there's any emails that have uh, come in. Let me just uh, click. I've had to re oh, there we go. Let's see. I hear you. OK, we got so that that's good. OK. Uh, um, but that was. Uh, Okay, so so OK, so we're good. So I've gotten through all of the questions. The numbers were not Roku. What do you mean? Oh, really? Oh, geez, thanks a lot. Mr. B Good thing to have wingman. It was not Roku. It was EXAS. Well, folks, I apologize. We're going to have to go through this process here because I've got to give out the right information. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, we've got somebody actually paying attention to uh, one person paying attention okay so here we're okay so now we're on the 130 minute time frame chart you've got a roads momentum indicator pattern out here price is trading below stevie's red line that's at 149.98 the price stays below that well it really needs to get below 148.33 that's the top of its profile out there let's look at a 65 minute time frame 65 minute time frame made a nice roads momentum indicator top makes a nice td nine count bottom it's now made a td nine count top out here uh, but price must get below 147.12 in order to offer a push to 140 482 and then a push to 141.82. 141.82 is a key level. That is a breakout level on a 65 minute chart. If we take a look at the 30 minute time frame, well, we'll try to do that. If I get my uh, mouse here working right, where's the mouse? There's the mouse. Where's the mouse? There we go. Did I say 30 minute? I think I did say 30 minute. Come on. There we go. 30 minute time frame. What do we have out here? I got nothing. Nothing with regard to a top, so let's not, let's not spend any time there. Let's go look at that 15-minute chart. 15-minute chart, roads momentum indicator top out here. It uh, doesn't look like I've got the 15-minute oscillator and change line, does it? So let's go get that. Give me a moment here. Golly. Uh, sorry, folks. The, the, the old mice here is not... Let me see here. Do I have it? No, I've got a 30-minute. No wonder, no wonder it looked all squiggly. So let's get that thing set properly out here. There we go. So here's the deal. So on a 15-minute, if you want to get really granular, which I think you do, you want to see price close below on a 15-minute basis, 148.40. I'd say you'd like to see that for two bars. That is the support level, which has been tested over the last half hour and is held. And if price is able to move below that, then your 144.05, there's your $4 um, figure that you are looking for. That was Roku. My Bill, I can't thank you enough for uh, being my wingman there and uh, paying attention to those charts and letting me know that it was actually ticker symbol EXAS that we were looking at versus um, Roku. But we did get Roku in. So what's next out there? Um, anybody have a request? The phone lines are open. Of course, we just have the two-minute wrap coming up in about 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds is when we go to the uh, breakout there. But let's take a look at Treasury bonds real quickly. What are T-bonds doing? You know, T-bonds are moving lower in all major currencies out there. A new lower low today in terms of pounds. Um, in terms of U.S. dollars, just trading in between a consolidation area. Basically, the top of the consolidation, the 161 and the bottom around 157.22. That's the bottom of its daily and weekly profile out there. It's daily and weekly profile, and that's the key level. 
A close below 157.22 suggests another leg to the downside in T-bonds. Not there yet. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's what you'd be looking for. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. Uh, right now we've got uh, many of the indices that are green. You've got the Dow up seven, the S and P is up one point, the Nasdaq up two. Russell is flat, uh, but just slightly green. Uh, semis are up five points. New York Stock Exchange is up twelve. So uh, we're not going to. We, we've given you the numbers to take a look at inside the NQ uh, to be watching, as well as spot volatility. I think those are the two most important uh, levels to be watching. Are these markets bullish or bearish? That's something you and I are always trying to answer. If we take a look at the Dow, let's uh, finish this off. Finish today's segment. Up, I take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. And as we take a look at it, here's what we know. So, you know, we spent time today looking at charts. Well, I need to share this chart with you. So give me a second here to, to do that. Otherwise, I'm talking to myself. Of course, I'm always talking to myself. But then I would really be talking to myself, and I don't want to talk to myself. I'd really like to share this with you. And here's this chart. Here's the Dow Equity Futures contract. And so when we take a look at Stevie's horizontal green and red lines, the TD9 breakout and breakdown levels. Green lines are the breakdowns. Red lines are the breakouts. 
when you make a top, which the uh, Dow uh, did, the Dow Equity Futures contract, the role of sellers is to see if they can bust out support. And we know that Stevie's red horizontal lines are support. It's where price broke out. It is a cool tool. Prior to having this tool, prior to utilizing this, I would have been using the only other thing that I had for a breakout, looking for a wide-ranging bar with volume or looking at the previous swing point. That's old information. We're not interested in old information. We're interested in tools here that help us identify support and resistance. Here's what the Dow did. It moved back. It tested and rejected 27,337. That was a buy-the-dip area. But we've got topping signals. Who is winning this tug of war? And I'll tell you, at 1.56 in the afternoon, I don't know. It's more neutral than anything else. Dow Equity Future, a close below 27,337. That changes the whole scenario. Folks, stay tuned. Two more great hours coming up. Your favorite polar bear, David White. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. And Stevie's son will be back with you tomorrow from 1 to 2. Have a terrific Thursday. Look forward to seeing you then.